my favorite memory at Oregon was, uh, I guess it was my freshman year when Coach finally let me get in the game. But when I got in the game, I played awesome. I played against Boise State, and it was like, okay, I can play college football now. And that kind of like set me up to be the great player that I was at Oregon because going there, I kind of didn't know everything was fast. Guys was older than me, but once I played my freshman year, I kind of knew like I can be a great player. The boys, even though we lost, but it was one of my best games as a player, even though I wasn't starting, but I played one of the best games and a lot of older guys remember me from that game. National championship? It was rough. <laughs> the national championship, that's one of my, I mean, that was one of, that's one of my great milestones of my life. Being able to play there and being on that high stage, that's what a, my coaches here, that's all they talk about. And I really don't remember a lot from the Nationals because you move on from the losses real quick. But a lot of people around the world remember me from national championships. So it's something that I, I'm happy that I got to be a part of. 2011, where you guys played in the national championship and Oregon made it back uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. Do you think they're ever going to get it? Oh, yeah, we're going back. I think, I think. Guys, it was a it was a class right before me, the Patrick Chongs and the TJ Wards and the, the Dennis Dixons that kind of started it. And I think it's going to steady increase to go up. I mean, it's going to be some rocky time. A lot of guys be like, oh, Oregon had a bad season, but we won 12 games. Like, that's a great season. In other guys' eyes, we maybe just didn't make it to the national championship. So I think we're on our way up. I think we're getting higher recruits now. We're getting the guys that we want, and it's only going to get better. Oh, I'm an Oregon trash talker. I talk trash every day about Oregon because I love the competitiveness and nobody can really tell me nothing about college football because if I say Oregon, they're going to say we cheating or we doing this. But everybody loves Oregon is what I found out. Guys from out of state, is, like, I don't think a lot of guys love USC and things like that, but a lot of guys from out of state be, man, I don't care. I used to watch y'all. Y'all y'all was great. So I'm a competitive guy. I watch every game, keep up with all the new players and things coming in. I try to keep up with them. I wish I can get down there more, but I schedule kind of in, in, when they're in season, I'm in the off season. So it's kind of, I can't get out there when I want to get out there. Like I want to be out there for spring ball, but we're in season, so. I was going to ask, do you have a relationship with Vernon Adams at all? Oh yeah, I know Vernon. We have talked over the phone a lot. We really have talked a lot ever since he's been, he's been coming to the professional end, so more of what I'm doing. He just signed a contract with mm -hmm. the CFL. Do you give him any advice on how to handle all this? Oh, my great advice was to him. I know, like after the first, after his last game, the one thing I told him was, man, you can make it. You can't, you can't his, listen to all the naysayers about you being short, you being this. You can make it and play professional football. I have played in the NFL, CFL, AFL. And one thing about the quarterback position is you're still the leader. You're still the lead man. In other positions, it's kind of, oh, I'm not in the NFL. I'm not great, but in the, as a quarterback, you can always be a great leader. You're always helping our guys. I'm happy to be here with these guys because I'm I'm not also helping them on the field, but off the field also. Me and Vernon has had a great relationship. I think he's going to make it. I think he his mind frame is great. So where he want to be, he knows where he want to be. And that's that's the first thing you got to do is be a believer in yourself. In Oregon? What do you get the most? Yeah, what do you Oh, my, my number one question for Oregon is, oh, man, why did you leave? And... Why did, you, why did you leave uh, such and such? But you was a great player. That was a, that's the main question I get from the adults. The kids are, why are you not playing in the NFL or things like that? And a lot of adults are confused on it also, but it's a, it's a different, it's more than football once you play in the professional level. It's not only who, who playing the game the best, it's more politics and things like that. So that's really the main question I get. Why did you leave so early and why are you not in the NFL with everybody else? How do you answer that when people ask you, why do you leave early? Why did I leave early? Yeah. Oh, I'm confident in it. I left early on my own end. I felt like I was playing at a high level of football, and I felt like I was one of the great quarterbacks coming out. Everything didn't work out like I wanted it to work out, but I still stand, stand heavily on, I think I was one of the best quarterbacks that came out that year. And I think even talking to NFL scouts and things like that, they know I'm a great player. Like I said, it's, it's more that comes into playing in the NFL, especially a quarterback when there's only two per team and only 30 teams. So. Yeah. I'm a, like coach Hilfers was my, my offensive coordinator and quarterback, at the, quarterback coach at the time. I'm so happy for him to be the head coach there. I know guys that's coming out of this program are going to be great guys off the field because Coach Hilfers is a great guy on and off the field. He's teaching you the morals on and off the field. So, But I keep up with the equipment guy. <laughs> I love that. Make sure I keep my Oregon gear. <laughs> nah, make sure I at least get some Oregon gear to give back to my family and my teammates and things like that. 
I don't, you ain't gonna see me in a lot of organ gear because I'm, I give it away a lot to, mm -hmm. to the people that wants it. Do you feel like people gave Helfridge an unfair shake after this last season? Oh yeah, I think Hel Helfridge always get an unfair shake just because of, like I say, the first year I think he won like 10 or 11 games and they was like, yeah, the down season. And I'm like, any school would pay for 10 plus wins. <laughs> the USC's, the Washington's there. You would pay, I mean, college coaches are getting paid to get 10 win seasons. So it's just that high pedestal that we put Oregon on. It's like, now you gotta, and they used to put us on that as players. It's, once you said it, you gotta keep fighting for it. Yeah. I'm a humble guy. I take a little pride into it. I don't take a lot of pride into it. I'm, I'm just happy for everything to, me, I was a Texas guy. I went to Oregon not knowing what I was getting myself into. And I'm happy that I made the decision to go to Oregon all the way from Texas and not go to these other schools just because of what, I'm, what I was known and being around, like the SEC. So one thing that I take from that, it was a peak, but I'm a humble guy, so yeah. we can always get Marcus won the Heisman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's way better. I, I